James the Giant Peach, and we are on to chapter five. The next moment, James was running back towards the house as fast as he could go. He would do it all in the kitchen, he told himself. If only he could get there without Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker seeing him. He was terribly excited. He flew through the long grass and the stinging nettles, not caring whether he got stung or not on his bare knees. In the distance, he could see Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker sitting in their chairs with their backs towards him. He swerved away from them as to go round the other side of the house, but then suddenly, just as he was passing underneath the old peach tree that stood in the middle of the garden, his foot slipped and he fell flat on his face in the grass. The paper bag burst open as he hit the ground and the thousands of tiny green things were scattered in all directions. James immediately picked himself up on his hands and knees and started searching around for his precious treasures. But what was this? They were all sinking into the soil. He could actually see them wriggling and twisting as they burrowed their way downward into the hard earth. And at once he reached out his hand to pick them up before it was too late. But they disappeared right under his fingers. He went after some others, but the same thing happened. He began scrabbling around frantically in an effort to catch hold of some of them that were left, but they were too quick for him. Each time the tips of his fingers were just about to touch them and they vanished into the earth. And soon, in the space of only a few seconds, every single one of them had gone. James felt like crying. He would never get them back now. They were lost, lost, lost forever. But where had they gone to? Why in the world had they been so eager to push down into the earth like that? What were they after? There was nothing down there. Nothing except the roots of the old peach tree and a whole lot of earthworms and centipedes and insects living in the soil. But what was it the old man had said? Whoever they meet first, be it bug, insect, animal or tree, that will be the one who gets the full power of the magic. Oh, good heavens, thought James. What's going to happen if they do meet an earthworm or a centipede or a spider? What if they go into the roots of the peach tree? Get up at once, you lazy little beast! A voice was suddenly shouting in James's ear. James glanced over and saw Aunt Spiker standing over him, tall and grim and bony, glaring at him through her steel-rimmed spectacles. Get back over there this immediately and finish chopping those logs, she ordered. Aunt Sponge, fat and pulpy as a jellyfish, came waddling up behind her sister to see what was going on. Why don't we just lower the boy down into the well in a bucket and leave him there for the night? She suggested, I ought to teach him not to laze around like this the whole day long. That's very good, Wheeze, my dear sponge, but let's make him finish chopping the wood first. Be off with each one, you hideous brat. Do some work. Slowly, sadly, poor James got up off the ground and went back to the wood pile. Oh, if only he hadn't slipped and fallen and dropped that precious bag. A hope of a happier life had gone completely now. Today and tomorrow and the next day and all the other days would be nothing but punishment and pain and unhappiness and despair. He picked up the chopper and was just about to start chopping away again when he heard a shout behind him that made him stop and draw.